Okay, thank you very much. Well, time, time is tight, and as you can see, I know nothing about the aquaculture industry, so why am I here? Uh, my thanks very much to the organisers and to you guys for welcoming me to this industry. It is true I'm on a very steep learning curve. Uh, let's talk about that and why am I here. So, my company literally converts fuel into food. But that wasn't how we started. It was completely by accident, possibly serendipity. I was at a conference two years ago, a Wall Street Journal Economics Conference, and Greg Page, the chairman of Cargill, was in the audience. And I won an award for the next big thing, which they do a lot of in Silicon Valley. This was in Santa Barbara. And I presented, don't worry about food versus fuel debate, our technology produces food from fuel. And Greg Page afterwards came up to me and he said, if that is real, we should talk. That was two years ago. Uh, so what is it about? It is methane, our feedstock is natural gas. Natural gas is now the cheapest usable form of carbon on planet Earth. And it has fundamentally transformed the economics of producing a product that is generically known as single cell protein. And I have to thank the previous presenter for giving me a great segue into what we're doing because we are on that list of future feed ingredients. The technology can also produce chemicals and that's actually what we started to do. That was the original concept of the story. Aquaculture came when we realized this technology had already been developed in Norway in the early 2000s. They'd actually built a plant to produce this product, 10,000 metric ton per annum capacity. But they didn't have the world-class biology that we have in California. They didn't have possibly the awareness that the market had shifted. And in those 10 years, natural gas prices had dropped from $15 an MMBTU to reaching a record low yesterday of just over $2 in North America. That's a fundamental shift in economics. Now, I am not going to repeat anything that you guys have already heard because time is tight. But we do recognize that protein through 2050 is a significant global challenge. And there's a great quote there from Greg Page, uh, my way of thanking him for actually saying to me, you're onto something there, you should do something about it. Because truly, I'm not from your industry. I'm an entrepreneur and I bought this technology. And I'm learning now that we might have something here extremely valuable. But food security is essential. We see migration, mass migration around the world. We've got massive disruption in Europe. Don't think that is entirely linked to the conflict in Syria. A lot of it is economically driven and is just a taste of what the world is going to experience if these major macro issues are not addressed. This slide, I love this. So more food production is required in the next 50 years than in all of human history. That's absolutely scary at one level. But moving on. And this is unacceptable at any level. 75% of the globe is covered by water. Look no further than you good people, you're on to it. That is where the future is. There's no more land and we can't go down ripping any more trees down. And I'm not saying that in itself is a major problem, but there are sensitivities around land and water use that are very real. So aquaculture, yes. And I think we've seen this slide already. So fish is on the up and other forms of protein are starting to plateau and maybe go down. And why? Because land-based protein uses too much land and way too much water. But also, it's highly inefficient in protein conversion. And so this slide really puts aquaculture on the map. Why on earth do the majority of Americans eat beef when it takes 10 times as much protein to produce it than salmon? 
words because most Americans live on land and don't live near the ocean. But aquaculture is fundamentally the right thing, but then we have an issue. So that's the solution, but there is a problem. Fish, particularly salmon, are carnivores, and they cannot metabolize complex sugars. You might call it starch, but soybean, concentrated soybean, these are carbohydrates. And salmon do not naturally eat these things, and they're eating a lot more in, fish, in farmed, uh, farming situations than they would ever, well, they eat none in the wild. And so there is only so much you can do here, and therefore you do have to think about replacements for fish meal. And I said that the previous presenter absolutely nailed that. But this protein conversion ratio is real. So the solution is not as obvious as it might seem. Yes, we need more fish, but you've also got to feed the fish. So where are the replacements for fish meal coming from? Well, Fish meal isn't it, we've seen that. Vegetable-based products are part of the solution but are also a big part of the problem because they're land-based. And so what we need is a product that is high in crude protein or fat but very low in fiber, ash and carbohydrate. Amino acid profile needs to be comparable to fish meal, the best frame of reference for fish nutrition there is. Scalable. Don't come and stand on this stage if all you can make is a couple of thousand tons. Or you need a pile of dung to feed your insects the size of Rhode Island. I'm an industrialist. My feet are firmly on the ground and I have built four companies and every one of those companies, it's, uh, the theme is, is it real, does it scale, does the market, is the market going to notice? There's no point. So it's got to be big volume. We're talking commodities here. Minimal if no need for land or water and highly digestible with supporting data. And it's got to be safe. Many alternatives are being pursued from seaweed through insects, and on the left-hand side there, you've got the gold standard herring fish meal. Our product is right next to the gold standard. We will be launching, this time next year, first commercial material, albeit from a small plant, which we will build in the next 12 months, to give contemporary samples of a product that was first produced 10 years ago in Norway, a product that is almost identical to fish meal. And it requires no land use, no water use, is non-animal based and non-vegetable based and is non-GMO. So what the heck is it? <laughs> Feed kind is a completely natural single cell protein. Non-GMO, totally safe in fish, proven over 10 years tested extensively by one of the best fish feed companies in the world, Evos, recently acquired by Cargill, first produced in Norway in Sheldebegorden, and will be produced in a world-scale industrial facility that will become operational at the end of 2017, somewhere in North America. We know where, but we can't say today. We're building the plant in North America because that is where the cheapest source of feedstock is, and I'm not going to invest over $100 million to build a plant if I do not believe that the fundamental economics mean that whatever happens to natural gas prices or fish meal prices or soy protein cons, that I can't compete. So we, we know where we're building the plant. It will produce 80,000 metric tons, and we are open for business. We'll license it to anybody who wants the technology because you could build 10 of these plants and it still wouldn't scratch the surface. It's a clean product. 
produced in natural uh, uh, a modern fermenter, stainless steel. It's dried and pelletized. It couldn't be more simple. There are no volatile organics. It's a net producer of water because it's an aerobic fermentation. So the process actually produces positive water. And the only inputs are methane, oxygen, and a source of nitrogen for the amino acids. That clean. Stainless steel, nothing else. That's the sort of scale. And we can sell it. God knows I could sell it today if I could produce it. The product was approved in the European Union in 2010. It's on the full registry, food and feed registry. That's our little uh, rock star, Mephalococcus capsulatus bath. It's a naturally occurring organism evolved by Mother Nature to sequester methane. And that was first isolated in the Roman baths in Bath in England back in the 1980s. It's a naturally occurring organism that was designed by nature to take methane out of the atmosphere. Don't think Mother Nature's hearing about climate change for the first time. <laughs> We've been, Mother Nature's been at it for billions of years. It's approved for all livestock, chicken, pigs, and was actually tested on foxes and mink as proxies for cats and dogs. And the comment earlier about pets, you know, I live in America now in California, and I swear I think Americans spend more money on their pets than they do on their kids. <laughs> and so the biggest dilemma for me being a businessman is, is why on earth should I actually sell any of this into the aquaculture industry? Because believe it or not, I could make a lot more money selling it into pet food. That last slide from our friend from Rainbow Bank is spot on. This product would sell better in that industry, and there's huge demand because pets develop allergies, and so they're constantly looking for new sources of protein that the pets haven't become allergic to. So we're going to fight over this first plant, I believe, but I'd like to think we can build many of them, and we can build them in any geography that's got access to cheap natural gas. So the Middle East is an obvious place where there's a lot of money. People are look, they import 90% of their food. They've got very cheap energy, and China and Southeast Asia. Obviously, the US, and actually even here in Canada would be a perfect place to build a plant. Eastern BC or Alberta. But finally, we're not going to rest on our laurels. The basic product was developed 10 years ago. 72% protein, 10% fat, and virtually nothing else. It's a very nice product. But what we are working on already is the second generation product. And we're tweaking the amino acids in response to our customers. So we've talked to fish feed producers directly and retailers. And we said, what are the key amino acids? What makes a difference to the texture of the salmon? Histidine. Well, oh, double it. No problem. We've already done it. So we are developing non-GMO strains, new variants of the microorganism, and we can tailor the amino acids. Now, we can work with you guys. You're the industry. We can work with you and design the next generation product. Tell us what you want it to look like. You don't care about that. That's all internal stuff. But what I will say finally, and I appreciate we're up, is we are definitely open for business. We haven't done a deal with anyone. I don't believe we're going to become the next Cargill or the next Mitsubishi or the next DSM. We have a very valuable technology. We'll be producing contemporary samples this time next year. We're looking at registrations outside of Europe, North America initially. We want to work with the industry. You guys understand this space a lot better than me. Please call me. We're, we're happy to talk to anyone and take guidance from you. This is your industry, and we're here to help. Thank you very much.